Flyers win it 4-2 to, to start the season. Welcome into Post Game Live, presented by Curato Insurance. Ashlyn Sullivan, Scott Hartnell, Al Morganti, back here with you in Philadelphia. Overall, a great performance for the Flyers to start. Some things to clean up. They started really fast offensively, Scott sputtered out, made it a little interesting, but got the win. Yeah, definitely made it interesting for <laughs> sure, but it was a 20-man effort tonight. It was a full roster. Everyone contributed. Everyone did something you know, special tonight to get that win, and uh, man, you kind of forget how stressful these games are, and especially in a close one. You think it's going to be a cakewalk 3-1, to one, and next thing you know it's 3-2. They got the puck. They're keeping it in. Carter Hart, but he, he was big and strong tonight. Never easy, but it, even when it gets close, it's nice. It, to me, it's nice it got close so Atkinson can have that moment there yep. at the end of the game, so they made some mistakes Mistakes, and I'm wondering if it wasn't they made mistakes because of some sloppy play or they're pushing it a little more offensively and they're taking some risks in this game. So they weren't they weren't shy about taking the puck and taking some risks in this game and the goalie covered up for them. Right. It's got to it seem overall they were just faster. And I imagine that's going to lead to some mistakes, especially at first. Well, Cam Atkinson shot out of a cannon. When you see an empty <laughs> cage like that and the puck ahead of Provorov, uh, you know, I'm sure for the guy, Flyers guys, uh, with the comments that Provorov yep. made before the game, you know, for Cam to get that goal, for you know him to be on the ice to take the minus, uh, uh, probably makes the Flyer guys feel pretty good. And for Provorov, on the, on the flip side, got a lot more ice time because Wierenski yeah. went out in the, early in the game. Uh, you know, and def, but definitely a win's a win. Yeah, and it's and all, but it all boils down to no matter what happens in hockey, if your goaltender plays like that, you've got a much better. Although their goaltender played well too, you've got a, a much better chance <laughs> yeah. to win. And he was terrific all night long. Here is Lager up, presented by Yingling, looking at the Flyers' big win over Columbus to start this season. And guys, when you see this, <laughs> Carter Hart was exceptional. He, yeah, he was solid. He was big. He was on, on top of his crease. There was hard any rebounds. Uh, it was just it was a just a good solid game. And he picked up an assist there late in the he game did. on Cam's, Cam's goal. It was a terrific assist up off the glass. And you know with Bush now doing the color, the goaltender is gonna get some credit. Oh yeah. But he he's, deserved it. He's gonna do no wrong <laughs> in Bush's eyes. He, just, right? he deserved a lot of it tonight, man. He was he was uh, terrific. And I mentioned uh, to Scott early, you worry coming into a regular season because they don't get that much work in a preseason schedule. And to get you know, line A going at you, Gaudreau going at you, so some pretty good guns hit, getting his way. Yeah, and that, that goal they scored at the end line, it's an absolute perfect yeah. shot by an absolutely 40, 50 goal scorer in Patrick Line. I still hats off to Carter, and then the guys played well in front of him as well. Yeah, Carter hurt 31 saves. That's his second career assist. He deserves that as yep. well. And then you flip the script on the Flyers right now. Offensively, there were so many games last season where it was so close for comfort. It didn't feel like that this game, and Joel Fairby, Al started it all off. Yeah, they it, it, they had more chances here. Yeah. They didn't finish. It was some quirky plays. A puck go up over a goaltender. Look like, a, oh, how did that not cross the line? But to start things off, this was terrific. A fair be two. I think this is last year was just have to come back from that next surge but this is awkward two on oh sounds like it's simple it's not Scott no and just it started with Zamula too with the long stick he's a big body uh, turning that one there's the poke check right there and they're off to the races and you know the, the defender there blue jackets tripped and fell but yeah, he, he, he almost overpassed yeah. it. He almost want to be, like you said earlier, you don't want to be too selfish or you don't want to go on the breakaway yourself. You want to have your teammate involved, but just good finish. This offside one-timer with the elevation, getting over the pad. He puts that on the ice. It's a big save uh, for, for the Blue Jackets and, and could have went the other way. Yeah, and it's a big year for, for Farabee after what he went through last year to come in. Remarkably played so much after that neck surgery, but you can tell he's, he's more confident just the way he feels this year coming into the season. Yeah, you could imagine for Joel Fair being Sean Couturier, it was very generous. Like, yeah. you get the goal, you get the goal. <laughs> yeah. And you could have seen when it would be important for Sean Couturier to get it, but nonetheless, he gets the point. And I imagine, Scott, you tell me better to just have that weight off your shoulders of, I got one. Yeah, especially with the two surgeries, his back, you know, how kind of fragile that'll be. He's Now he's played in one, one NHL regular season game. He's feeling good to get that early point, makes you feel better. He was strong on draws, uh, great on the penalty kill. Uh, just played a real solid Sean Couturier style of game, which, which we love. Yeah, absolutely. And having him in the faceoff dot is so much, so important after what they went through last year. Yeah, it is crucial. Let's now go back to the crossover. We're going to go back to Columbus where we have JJ and Boosh standing by. And guys, there was a lot of good in this game. A lot stood out offensively. What stood out to you? What player really caught your eye? Wow, it's, it's tough to choose just one, Ashley, and that's, that's a good thing, right, Boosh, when you have to think about it. I mean, Carter Hart was, was tremendous, of course, and, and so is Travis Konechny up front. Uh, I just thought it was a good game all around, but I like to look at some of the young guys who were, were trying to see if they're going to take that next step up, and I thought Yegor Zamula had a lot of good moments in this game. He set up the first goal with a, a nice breakup. He had a giveaway, but you're going to see some mistakes from these young players. It's the fact that he's back out there making plays after that. Yeah, I agree. I thought Zamula, you're right. The 
one mistake, but I thought he did a good job. He made several good defensive plays. I thought Sanheim looked good on Tremendous. the uh, on the offside. Uh, that's always going to be a question mark. How you how you handle that situation? I thought he had a strong game. I thought in the third period I saw a lot more Brink. I mean, I know he didn't get out there in the last power play, but he made some plays on the power play. Um, Hart was terrific. I think there was a lot of positive performances. Great to see Cam Atkinson score as well. You can't, you know, stress the importance of making sure that you have a good start to the season, getting that goal, getting that, you know, that 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 first goal out of the way. So, you know, look, there were some dicey moments at the end, but all in all, I thought it was a strong performance up and down the lineup. Yeah, you talk about guys that missed all of last year. Cam Atkinson, you just mentioned him, but Sean Couturier, how great is it to have him in the lineup? You know, especially in the faceoffs down at the end of the game. Yeah, I, to me, I, I think he's the most important part of this team, uh, Hartsey. I mean, you, you think about what, what the Flyers missed last year down the middle. They have provided some opportunity for guys like Noah Cates and Morgan Frost. But the reality is, I mean, you need to have Sean Couturier in those critical moments. And uh, a big face-off at the end to, to, to win a draw uh, and, and eventually get the win. I mean, to me, Couturier is a huge part of this team. If they don't have him, I mean, all of the, the, the hope that we have up in this booth, I mean, it goes away. He's that important. Yeah, I mean, I, I just to see him out there is so great. I mean, what is it, 366 days, something like that for him, and uh, he missed 135 games. So we're, we're talking about, you know, a long, long layoff. So is he Sean Couturier 100% at the peak of his game yet? No, but he's still doing those things, breaking up plays, winning face-ups, as you mentioned, uh, and, and then we can talk about what he means to this team off the ice because he is a team leader. I know it wasn't that long ago he was the young kid, but now he's 30 and he's the one of the elder states been on this team and you can tell players look up to him. And Bruce, you mentioned Sanheim, more expected of him. He got a lot of ice time, which I suppose will go on all year playing that side of the ice. But he even looked, I'm, I'm going to say this, he even looked more aggressive complaining about a penalty. He just <laughs> looks like a, a more aggressive, more confident guy that's, that knows he has the better, sta more statue with this team right now. Well, it's a great point, Al. I mean, you think about the, you know, the guys that are no longer here on the back end, right? Ivan Provorov, Tony D'Angelo, Justin Braun. Uh, those are some, in, you know, in D'Angelo and Braun, some older guys. Now it's time for Travis Sanheim to kind of take the reins, to be more of a leader. He's armed with that big long-term contract. Um, yeah, maybe he's got a chip on his shoulder, but he, you know, he's put the work in in the offseason, but now I think just having that attitude that you're going to be the go-to guy, you're going to be the guy that leads that back end, I think he's relishing that 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 moment right now. He's had a strong preseason. I thought it carried over here tonight to game one, and that's a positive sign for this uh, this back end for the Flyers. Yeah, we talked to John Tortorella about Travis uh, before the game tonight, and he, he really loves the approach he's seeing from him. Uh, you know, he had an offseason where he was basically traded and that can sting and, and and he signed a contract here last year to be a flyer basically for life and then all of a sudden uh, they're you know trying to move him but it didn't work out and he's taking the perfect attitude he's put way down he looks different physically you talked about him complaining about a penalty but he, just along the wall he looks stronger and all that but from an attitude standpoint he's like you know, I'm going to show you guys something. And maybe that's the kind of chip on his shoulder that he needed because he really, I think, from day one of training camp has looked like a different player. You love to see it. J.J. Boosh, thank you so much. Great first call, and we will see you again on Saturday. <laughs> they're always Boosh. great calls when they're W's, Ash. Absolutely. We are here right, for see. that. Get All right, that much more to come ready. here on Post Game Live. <laughs> Coming up, we're going to hear from Carter Hart back in Columbus. Stay with us, NBC Sports Philadelphia. Flyers Post Game Live is presented by Pure Auto Insurance. See how much you can save at pure.com.